Good evening, everybody, and welcome again into my home th tonight as we do our family devotion. I'm really glad you're here. Uh, pull up a chair, sit a spell, and enjoy our time together. Uh, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so our devotion for tonight on this Saturday, April 18th. He will do this. Psalm 37, 5. I once believed that after I prayed, it was my responsibility to do everything in my power to bring about that prayer. Yet God taught me a better way and showed me the self-effort usually hinders his work. It also revealed that when I prayed and had confident trust in him for something, he simply wanted me to wait in an attitude of praise and do only what he told me. Sitting still, doing nothing except trusting in the Lord, causes a feeling of uncertainty. And there is often a tremendous temptation to take the battle into our own hands. We all know how difficult it is to rescue a drowning person who tries to help his rescuer. And it is equally, equally difficult for the Lord to fight our battles for us when we insist upon trying to fight them ourselves. It is not that God will not, but that he cannot, for our interference hinders his work. Spiritual forces cannot work while we are trusting earthly forces. Often we fail to give God an opportunity to work, not realizing that it takes time for him to answer prayer. It takes time for God to color a rose or to grow a great oak tree. And it takes time for him to make bread from wheat fields. He takes the soil, then grinds and softens it. He enriches it and wets it with rain showers and wet dew. Then he brings the warmth of life to the small blade of grass, later grows the stalk and the amber grain, and finally provides bread for the hungry. All this takes time. Therefore, we sow the seed to the ground and then wait and trust until God's purpose has been fulfilled. We understand this principle when it comes to planting a field, and we need to learn the same lesson regarding our prayer life. It takes time for God to answer prayers. You know, I've, I've said this to you before, but it bears repeating. God always answers prayers because he's faithful. We love when he says yes. That's the best answer, I guess, right? What well, we think it is. We're not so happy when he says no. In fact, there are people who are so selfish and so egocentric that they believe when God says no, that it's really him not answering prayers. So they'll say to you, God doesn't always answer prayers. I mean, nobody likes no, but no is an answer. For you parents out there, sometimes you have to say no to your children. For you wives out there taking care of your husbands these days, sometimes you have to say no to your husbands, especially if they're naughty. But sometimes we have to say no. It's an answer. But perhaps the hardest one, at least it is for me, is wait. I'm not a good waiter. I don't like waiting. I'll admit that. If we go to a restaurant and there's a wait, I'll say to Stephanie, I don't want to wait. If it's long, we're leaving. And for me, a long wait is 10 minutes. I hate waiting in line at amusement parks for a ride, even though I love being on rides, especially roller coasters. I hate waiting in line. I hate being in traffic and waiting to get where I'm going. I don't like waiting. I don't know why. I just don't. Maybe it's because I move so fast or maybe I'm a little impatient, but I don't like waiting. And I guess most of us don't like waiting. And when God says wait for an answer to prayer, it's like pulling teeth. It's like pulling teeth. But I guess... Our, I know that our devotion makes a pretty powerful point for tonight. Waiting is an act of faith. Waiting is an act of faith. There are different seasons in the life of a Christian, right? There's spring, fall, winter, summer. And a lot of those seasons, like summer and spring, we see a lot of new life. We see all this vibrant activity, and we see all these things going on. Then there's fall. Well, we see things going on, color changes, and there's winter, and it's a long season of waiting. And sometimes we have to go through winter in our lives. That waiting is an opportunity for God to grow us, to bring us closer to him, to strengthen our faith and our journey, to be a witness for him to others. I remember back... After my, uh, I took some time off to, for a year to work on my mental illness, took a, 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 a sabbatical, if you will, to work on me, uh, to, to focus on my PTSD and, and to get better. And then after that was done, came the hard process of waiting for, for a call back into a congregation. 
And that seemed like it took forever, even though it was only like four months or something. It wasn't long at all, not even four months. It wasn't long at all before the calls came and started rolling in. It felt like an eternity waiting. What was going to happen? Where were we going to go? How will we make ends meet? Waiting. Waiting is hard. All of us are waiting right now. Waiting. Waiting on life to get better, waiting on this virus to go bye-bye, waiting on a vaccine, waiting on a good treatment, waiting to see what's going to happen with finances, waiting to see what uh, the new normal looks like, waiting to see when this will end so we can start seeing each other again and going out to restaurants again and all of this stuff, waiting to get back to church so that we can see each other and, and celebrate together, waiting, waiting, waiting. The season of winter. But all the seasons are necessary because they're all by God's design. And they're all needed, even the season of waiting in our life. For it's truly during these times of waiting where if we sit still and we praise God and we thank God and we're grateful to God for all the blessings He give us, gives us, He will open our eyes to see His beauty at work. And when he opens our eyes to see his beauty at work, marvelous things happen. We grow in our faith. We draw closer to God. We rely on him more. We celebrate his goodness, the resurrection, and its benefits and gifts to us every day even more. And even in the midst of waiting, our eyes are open to see how God is literally interacting in our lives through provision, through protection, and through blessings that we would never see unless we sit still and wait on God. Psalm 47, 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. It's time. So be still and wait. God is showing himself to you powerful, glorious, and loving ways. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, waiting is hard. (laughs) And it's not fun, especially right now. We don't get to see each other. We don't get to go out and do what we normally do. A lot of worry and anxiety out there. This is not fun. Open our eyes, our hearts, our minds, and our souls to see your presence with us in the risen Jesus right now, to identify what you are doing in our lives, to see the blessings you are pouring out on us that we normally would not be able to see, and to have spirits of joy and thanksgiving for you and in you and through you. As we wait, draw us closer to you. Strengthen our faith and give us longing eyes for the eternal gift of heaven, which is ours through our risen Lord in whose name we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks again for joining me in my home tonight. I'm honored that you take this time to be with me and and Stephanie, and I'm honored that we can do this together. I cherish this time, but I cherish you more and can't wait to see you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Be at peace. Your Lord is with you. Go now in God's peace. Rest in him and know that he is by your side to bless and keep you always in his care. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night. Bye-bye.